From the rightmost corner, we will have uh, Dr. Sena Chalum Gamage, Director of PIM. Next, we have uh, the Chief Guest, Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayavadanapura, Senior Professor Sudanta Dinage. We have the Guest of Honor, the Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies from the University of Sri Jayavadanapura, uh, Senior Professor M. M. Padmala. And then we have the Conference Co Chair, Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri. A day. 24 hours. A lot can happen in a day. Just to give you a brief, by the time that today is over, there would be 152,000 new cars produced in the world, 23 billion text messages, 600 million plus Netflix views, and most importantly, 385,000 new lives would have seen the dawn of the world. We are also said going to celebrate the end of a year just in a few weeks' time give you a brief on that. By the time the clock hits December 31st, 14.2 billion food tons would have been wasted. The sea levels would have risen by 3.6 millimeters. 300 plus million new business startups would have been created around the world. 800,000 people would have got hacked and Australian tectonic plates would have shifted towards Asia by seven centimeters. Such is the dynamic nature of the business world. And when change is the only constant, the only way to make sure that business decision makers are ready to take their businesses in the right direction is by making sure we reflect on the reality through nothing else but the lens of well-cleansed research. It's with this intention in mind that PIM organized the PIM Annual Research Conference 2022 a festival of insights, a kaleidoscope of knowledge, and most importantly, a day where we hope you will go back to your workplaces, to your universities, ready to shape the future direction of Sri Lankan enterprises, global enterprises, as well as the Sri Lankan and global economy. I'm Tarandu Amarasekara, Senior Lecturer of PIM, and your host for this morning. As customary, we would like to commence the proceedings with the PIM anthem. Please rise. Jaya 
वतन पूर्व तुझय सर सर विकसित पीम उबर अप विद्या भूमि पितु बस दस दस वीरा बोल देवा जय दत बंदा बिन पर अप विद्या भूमि It's now time for the welcome address to welcome everyone who is gathered here today as well as those who are joining us through our virtual streaming channels. The welcome address will be delivered by a dynamic personality who has been a driving force of success behind the PIM annual research conference over many years. The welcome speech will be delivered by conference co-chair Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri. So Ajanta Dharmasiri has a rare combination of being a chartered manager, chartered HR professional and a chartered electrical engineer. He is an acclaimed conference speaker, trainer, strategy consultant and author as well as an academic. He was the director of the Postgraduate Institute of Management as well as the chairman of the board of management. He is an adjunct professor at the Price College of Business attached to the University of Oklahoma. He was the editor of the Sri and the pioneering editor of the Sri Lanka Journal of Management, and he is also a Commonwealth and this are doctoral fellow, a Fulbright postdoctoral fellow, and a Commonwealth postdoctoral fellow, and and currently an independent director of several boards. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome conference co-chair Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri for the welcome address. Thank you, Tarandu. Hi, Bowen. Wanakam. Assalamualaikum. A good day to all of you. So, may I recognize the presence of uh, the esteemed uh, guests at the head table and also the presence of the virtual participants, including the keynote speaker, Professor Amrik Sohal from Monash University, Australia, and my co-chair, uh, Professor Nilakshi Galhetia from UAE. Uh, at the outset, let me welcome all of you for a wonderful day of exciting research. So I'm very happy as a co-chair to invite you for that um, excellent, exciting, exploring day full of research endeavors. First of all, let me recognize the presence of Senior Professor Sudanta Lienege, the uh, Vice Chancellor of uh, uh, University of Shijawadhanapura, our parent university. And it's sad not to mention, sir, that it will be the final appearance, uh, you in the capacity of the vice chancellor uh, in a PIM event, because we were told that he'll be stepping down and he will be leaving the country for a sabbatical period starting from 23rd of December. So in uh, critical points of PIM, you were a pillar of strength for us, sir, and uh, you had always been a guiding light for us. So thank you very much for all those support and also uh, for being with us despite your uh, busy schedule. We know there's a lot of things to be done before you leave. And despite all those things, you being with us is an encouraging support for us. And also let me recognize the presence of uh, Senior Professor Padmalal Managi, the Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, who is also a member of the Board of Management of PIM and who has also been a pillar of strength to PIM. So I'm very happy that I, I earnestly hope this will be the last appearance uh, for him as a Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies. And we earnestly hope that he would appear uh, with us in a higher capacity, hopefully if everything works well. So that's my earnest wish and that's a wish of PIM as well. So let me also recognize the dynamic leader of us, uh, Dr. Seneca Kalum Gamage, the director of PIM, and who had been empowering us to do this conference in the best possible manner. Thank you, sir, for all the support, all the guidance, and I warmly welcome him for the uh, PMARC 2022. And also I can see the uh, faculty members of PIM and also the academic and uh, non-academic staff of PIM, including the seniors and re seniors registrar and the two uh, deputy bursars and all uh, the members of PIM family, and also uh, the virtual participants who have connected with us and uh, 
It will be the virtual participation throughout the day uh, and the presenters will come physically. The participation uh, will be virtual and all of you are warmly welcome to PMAC 2022 with the app theme uh, reflecting research, uh, rather reflecting reality through research. So why we say reflecting uh, reality through research? So if I am to simplify the word research, I would call it research. It's again going back to the roots identifying the root causes. For me, it's a case of dazzling with the puzzle. It's all about puzzle solving, problem solving, issue identification and issue related recommendations. So it's all about digging deeper with a broader mindset. So we badly need such depth and breadth in a society where things are ad hocly done. Decisions are made in a uh, rash manner, in a harsh manner. So we need to have that research insights in order to have data-driven decisions. We need to have the right informative approach in addition to being intuitive in order to ensure that we take the right decision at the right time, in the right manner, in producing the right results. So in a current economic crisis that we are going through, we all face the VUCA reality. It's all about the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. In fact, we were talking about it say, in the classrooms on change management, and I didn't realize that it will come to our doorstep so fast, VUCA world. So we need to have the response as well. We need to have the VUCA 2.0. It's having the clear vision, clear understanding, confidence, and agility. So we need to be... Uh, a visionary in thinking about the future, having the long-term plan in mind and working towards that with confidence and competence. For that, the research plays a key role. Particularly as researchers, we need to be knowledge uh, capturing, knowledge communicating, and knowledge creating. That's the uh, level of research that we need to embark on. And again, it's research, uh, I would say, not for the sake of doing research. Research is for the betterment of humanity. Uh, humanity and for the society and for the socio-economic upliftment of the world. And we have hit the rock bottom as a nation. Technically, we are a bankrupt nation. But the positive side is that when we hit the rock bottom, the only possibility is to move up and up and up, no further going down. So in such a, a mammoth endeavor, research can play a key role. Research should play a critical role in identifying where we need to prioritize um, clarifying the bottlenecks and ensure that we have solutions which are sustainable in order to ensure that we can move beyond this current crisis with uh, reviving uh, resilience. With the reviving resilience, we can have that uh, resurrection or the revival that the country badly needs. And I have no doubt that we have plenty of brains to do that and we need to have the right focused approach with the right strategies in mind and we need to collectively collaborate in order to ensure that we all contribute to the betterment of uh, Sri Lanka. So in such a context, may I warmly welcome all of you once again for a day of exploration, day of exp uh, expansion of our knowledge and a day of excellence in line with PIM vision to be a center of excellence in management education in South Asia. So we need to endeavor research excellence. So today is going to be a uh, day of showcasing the research endeavors with research excellence in mind. So enjoy the day. Let me warmly welcome all of you once again in order to ensure that we have a day full of uh, thoughts, insights, and actions. And we would look forward to uh, listen to Professor Ambrik Sol. Uh, and I'm sure he would give us lots of insightful uh, inspirational message as a keynote speaker. So thank you, sir, for joining us far away from uh, down under. And we will look forward to have your presence and also uh, Dr. Brother, Professor Edward Sweeney from um, Harriet White University from UK also would be joining us for the doctoral colloquium. So may I warmly welcome the session chairs of the doctoral colloquium and the parallel tracks we are having in the afternoon and also a unique industry dialogue we are going to have at the last item of the agenda. And so we are doing something very important this time where we are having a parallel tracks where we showcase uh, application of research. For example, entrepreneurship projects, uh, skill projects, case studies in addition to PO research. So it's a combination of different types of research we are showcasing particularly in the afternoon. So it's a day full of excitement and enjoy the day. Thank you very much.
research towards improving humanity, a noble cause indeed to which we hope we can contribute throughout the proceedings of today. Thank you very much, Professor Ajanta Dalmasiri, Conference Co-Chair of PIMAC 2022 for those inspiring words. Next, a few words from yet another source of inspiration and strong support towards making this event a success, who is none other than the director of the Postgraduate Institute of Management, Dr. Senaka Kalum Gamage. Armed with over two decades of experience in university level education management, Dr. Gamage has also served as a director of World Bank funded higher education projects of the University of Sri Jayanathanapura for over 10 years. A veteran in the field of knowledge creation, he is acknowledged in the industry for his significant contribution to academia as well as value based leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the director of PIM, Dr. Senaka Kalum Gamage. Very good morning to all of you, my colleague, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, our chief guest, Senior Professor Sudanta Lianage, Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayavardhanapura. Your presence physically here and your support given to our institute throughout the years are greatly encouragement to our faculty as well. Thank you for accepting our invitation, sir, being here today morning, physically present in this inaugural session. Guest of honor, Senior Professor M. M. Padmalal, Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, University of Sri Jayavardhanapura, and also the co member of the Board of Management of PIM. And also, he is serving as the member of the Research Council of the Postgraduate Institute of Management. Your uh, presence and the valuable contributions to the development of the Postgraduate Institute of Management are greatly appreciated, sir. Thank you for being with us today. Our keynote speaker, Professor Amrik Sohil, Professor of Management, Monash University, Australia, joining today through the virtual environment. Thank you, Professor Amir, for accepting our invitation to be the keynote speaker for this inaugural session of the PMAC 2022. Professor Edward Swamy, Head of Operational Management and Logistics, uh, Head Trick about University, Edinburgh, United Kingdom, is also joining as a virtual participant for the Dr. Roll keynote speaker today. Thank you, Professor, being with us in a very early morning in the UK. Our two chairpersons, Professor Ajanta Dharma Siri, who is present here physically, and also present in Lakshi Galahityava, all the way joining through the virtual environment from UAE. All the eminent chairpersons of the conference, all my faculty members, Senior Assistant Registrar, Deputy Bursars, and all administrative and non-academic staff members who are present here today, a dynamic and energetic uh, organizing committee members who are present here today, our PIM alumni members, paper presenters, all learning partners, and other invitees who are joining through the virtual environment in this morning session, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure and honor to speak a few words on this important occasion. The inaugural session of the annual research conference 2022 of the PIM. Considering the current economic and financial crisis faced by the country, the conference is designed under the theme of reflecting reality through research. This year's conference attempts to provide the researchers with a forum to discuss their research ideas and articles and showcase how their work could be applied to the industry. The PMAC 2022 will embark on a journey of contributing the existing knowledge and transforming it into the practice in a way that is beneficial to the industry. Through this conference, PIM has initiated a fresh approach to research conferences by initiating a new view of knowledge dissemination that transferred the knowledge gained from the research to relevant stakeholders under the appropriate team reflecting reality through research. The PMAC 2022 acknowledge that the exchange of knowledge is one of the key elements towards the sustainable growth of the businesses, which is the being neglected by many of these traditional research conferences. Furthermore, it is an open platform for our postgraduate learning partners, especially the masters as well as the PhD students to present their ongoing research work to the eminent panel members and mass audience 
to get their views on the further development of their ongoing research works. As we know, management research provides a wonderful avenue that encourages the growth of the critical and analytical skills, helping the academia and the learning community to reach out the society and the world of businesses. It is thus an effective platform that allows our researchers to inspire new knowledge and aid national development of the country. Being the country's pioneering postgraduate management education institute, affiliated with the largest Sri Lankan university, the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, we has endowed outstanding corporate leaders, business persons, as well as uh, scholars to the Board Society for the last 36 years. The PIM has shaped our postgraduates to face the immense challenges in the contemporary dynamic environment while being ethical and socially sensible to uplift the society to sustainable successes. From the inception, the PIM has been very active in creating the research inspiring culture that enables the learning partners and the staff to engage in outstanding research work in the discipline of management. To further enrich this research culture at the PIM, we have now taken steps to award the research grants for the academics, staff members, by establishing the grant scheme. I am sure this research day 2022, which provides the scholarly platform for the researchers to demonstrate excellent research work and share their expertise as the as they prepare for the leadership role in the businesses. This year conference. A consist of doctoral colloquium, research paper presentation done by the master's program learning partners, and also at the end, industrial forum. See, the doctoral colloquium provide an excellent platform for the doctoral students to share their current research ideas and obtain the in-depth feedback from the internationally renowned researchers and local scholars joining as a chairpersons and panelists physically and virtually to this uh, important research session. Afternoon in the day, research sessions provide the master's researchers with a program, discuss their research ideas and articles, and showcase how their work could be applied in the industry. We will be able to get the feedback from our senior members, faculty members from the PIM, as well as the other academics from the other local state universities who are joining for that sessions as a chairperson of the sessions. It also consists of the industrial dialogue at the end, targeting for the knowledge translation, which provides the platform for the business-related debates. Our paper presenters will be able to get the opportunity to discuss the applicability of their findings to the actual practice with the business leaders who will be joining those sessions in the evening. It is my humble wish that the PIMAC 2022 offer a powerful learning opportunity that goes beyond the traditional classroom experiences and provide the platform for the first day learning through the collaboration with the academia, learning partners, and the research scholars. I'm confident that this year's annual conference will contribute to the cultivating research culture among the Sri Lankan academics and practitioners and initiate interaction among the researchers to exchange ideas about recent advances in the management field. Last but not least, let me take this opportunity to thank again the Senior Professor Sudanta Lianagi as our Chief Guest being with us today morning, and the Senior Professor Padmala Lianagi, our guest appointee, who is here today with the physical form, and also Professor Amrik Sohil and Professor Edward Sweeney being our keynote speakers, uh, joining with us virtually, and track coordinators, chairpersons, and list reviewers, organizing committee members, and more specifically, the authors for their contribution to successful organizing and managing this PMARC 2022 conference. I also wish to thank all our strategic sponsors, MasterCard, and also the Perfect Business Solution Services, PBDS Group, for their financial support provided for this conference. My thanks goes to all the participants who are joining this research conference through the virtual platform. While congratulating all the paper presenters, let me wholeheartedly wish PMARC 2022 a great success. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Dr. Senak Kalungamage, Director of PIM, for setting the outline and the agenda for today and making clear our intentions of creating more knowledge into the current economic context, as well as enabling the participants to reflect on reality through research. Thank you very much, sir. Next, time for the chief guest's address. Our chief guest for today is none other than the Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayavardhanapura, Senior Professor Sudanta Lianage. Professor Sudanta Lianage obtained his PhD from the University of Wales in Cardiff in the United Kingdom. He has also been awarded the postdoctoral scholarships with uh, and the postdoctoral research fellowships with the University of Cardiff, and also the postdoctoral research fellowship from the University of Ibaraki in Japan. He has also been the chairman of the Royal Society of Chemistry, Sri Lanka. He has also been involved in developing a new electoral system for Sri Lanka in 2009. And based on that proposal, the interim report was presented to the Sri Lankan parliament. He has also been the member of two presidential task forces namely the Task Force for Education and the Task Force for Higher Education in the year 2020. He has also been a consultant in the Presidential Task Force Advisory Committee, providing valuable input for the development of Sri Lanka. He has been the chairman in the Academic Advisory Board of the National Institute of Education. And uh, at the same time, he was also appointed as the chairman of the National Institute of Higher Education. He has contributed with over 50 newspaper articles which were written for local and global newspapers and has contributed to many research papers across research forums in Sri Lanka and around the world. It's an absolute honor to have his presence with us this morning. Please welcome for the chief guest address, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayavardhanapura, Senior Professor Sudanta Lirage. Hi, Boan. Very good morning, all of you. Members of the head table, uh, Dr. Kalum, Professor Padbalal, and Professor Ajanta, uh, other distinguished guests physically and virtually connecting with us, and especially the keynote speaker today, Professor Amrik Sahail and Professor Nilakshi Galahitiava. So I think um, I'm very much happy to be here with you especially the your research day as a scientist. So I really value the component, what we call as the research. The When uh, the UGC basically asked us to formulate the Sri Lanka qualification framework, so we have put a small, I can say the big uh, thing saying that all the uh, honors graduate should complete six, it is must rule, six credit research component. So that is only for the honors. So if you are go beyond the qualification framework level, whether it's a level 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so we are expecting a higher credit number uh, research component from those uh, postgraduate students or the people. When Tarundi Tar Tarindu is explaining and he has given some statistics, fantastic, very good. I think he has missed one of the most important things. Very recently, I think that is November 18th, if I'm correct, the world achieved the highest population number that hit the 7 billion. So now our the world population is 7 billion. So if you think about the, the population growth in certain countries, so it seems that the India is doing better than China. It's uh, 1.47 and now it's almost 1.3 seven, something like that. So that means now when you compare the population growth of those two countries, China versus India, India has a higher population growth than the China. So within another 30 years time, definitely in this world, so more Indians are than the Chinese. So and the other thing is the, the, the area of the world is fixed, unless otherwise some countries like Dubai, maybe Russia and some of the countries. So, and, and even the Sri Lanka, if you are going for, uh, for a, uh, the projects like port cities, we can very slowly expand our, the world area, but population is growing. So that, that means the ratio to population to area 
right? There is an issue. So that is nothing to do with the science. That is nothing to do with the engineering. So therefore, what we need is a good managers to manage this entire world. Not only even the, the this post-COVID area, I'm always telling to my colleagues at the university, the, if you take the case of COVID, all scientists fail basically. All of a sudden, very small microorganism hit the world. We couldn't do anything. And if you have a good look, the countries basically closed down during the pandemic season are now having a crisis. Not only in Sri Lanka. I have been in UK last week. My goodness. Serious issue in the United Kingdom. I studied in UK. That is my second home. When I visited, I have visited many times to UK. Most of the time, the UK is very clean and tidy. But this time, it's not like that. So they are also experiencing some kind of a recession or whatever it is what we are experiencing here. That is there. Even I have revisited Malaysia. So we really want to have an omelette, but it is extremely difficult to find eggs. That is a, something like two months ago. So they also had the same issue. Fortunately, in Sri Lanka, at least if you spend 60 rupees, you can still buy a, a egg, buy an egg. So if all the countries are suffering, but if you think about the countries who have not closed during the pandemic, they are doing really well. One is Russia. I have been in Russia about six weeks. And again, I am going to Russia. They are doing really, really well. The many people think, and our newspapers, everybody says that because of the Ukraine war, Russia is not doing well. No, that is totally wrong. They are doing really, really well. Really, really well. They are doing a lot of development projects. The new projects are there, a lot of people, and you, you won't believe. So they are expecting 3 million laborers. Uh, they really want to uh, get outside the world because they don't. They, they, they also have a severe shortage because of the, these uh, development projects. And even the United States, they have not closed the country, but they are doing really well. So I think that the doctors have to blame to my understanding, because they're always telling to close down, close down, then we can solve this issue. But I think the as a managers, you have to tell us how to manage the crisis. So in that event, I think this particular uh, year, research symposium is so important for PIM, not only the PIM, to the entire Sri Lanka, because we know what are our problems. So we have to come up with some solutions. We have to come up with some solutions. Our biggest issue is we are not taking decision on time. Now, when um, the, Dr. Callum says, he said, I am stepping down from the, the vice chancellor position. Yes, I am. Because I have completed my three-year term. So normally, vice chancellor position only for the three years. But due to some UGC issues, I may can uh, uh, be there for another four, five months. But I thought I have completed and I'm not going for second term due to my personal thinking. So therefore, I have to leave at the best point. So this is the best point. So everybody wants, everybody coming to me and say, sir, please wait, don't go. So, but I said, no, I have to, I am going because I have, I really want to enjoy my sabbatical leave. I have two years and eight months sabbatical leave with pay. So that is the best time because anyway, one day we have to leave. I am not going to be forever vice chancellor for the University of Sri Java. Yes, I have done something to my own university, but we have to take some decisions. So like that in the Sri Lanka, the biggest issue is we are not taking decision at correct time. Sometimes we are taking decision at wrong time. So there are four ways of taking decisions. I, I know you all know better than me. So therefore, I think when you are having a uh, research or the PhD colloquium or research uh, thing, the most important thing is you have to discuss your finding. So once you discuss your finding with your peers and your academic teachers, then you can do the fine tuning. That is the most important thing in your life. That's why I'm always saying after doing a, a research project, you have to critically Analyze that particular project. But very unfortunately in Sri Lanka, what is happening, especially with the scientists, once you completed the project, they are having a kind of a, a forum and they are giving their results. 
what normally I call quote all these things, things as a pseudoscience. They never discuss their finding with the, their peers. They don't like having criticisms. Now, very recent fertilizer issue. Right? So, somebody has given a wrong advice to at that time, President. Sorry. So, regarding this kidney disease, all wrong advices. If you think about the proper science, they are not taking those decisions based on the science. So, therefore, all these things, what we call as a pseudoscience. So, ultimately, the entire nation is suffering because of that. So, therefore, the most important thing is to critically analyze your results and do the fine tuning. Then, ultimately, you end up with your, your something good for this country. And especially during your uh, time at PIM, I think you may have learned a lot of theories. And even Ajanta mentioned many theories. But today, during the pandemic, uh, post pandemic era, most of the known theories are not working. In, in, in chemistry, I'm a chemist. We say we have a real world, right? So most of the time, the, what we know or the known theories are not working as it is in the real world. So you have to adjust some of your formulas, some of your formulas. So most of the time, what the, our mistake is doing, we think that even the real world, same thing can be applied. So that is wrong. So therefore, dear students, or maybe now you all are, maybe most of you all are the mature students. Thank, uh, and uh, first, I, I wish you all you the very best uh, in completing your uh, postgraduate studies at PIM. And I believe this is the best um, uh, postgraduate uh, faculty or the institute in Sri Lanka. So, but the most important thing is to analyze your PhD, uh, analyze your postgraduate findings. That is extremely important. So you have to redo, reshape some of these findings. So that is the most important thing in your life. And, and also, why you are doing the research to improve your analytical thinking. That is very, very important analytical thinking. Most of the people fail in the real society because they don't have a fantastic analytical thinking ability. That is also so important. So anyway, I wish all the very best for the future endeavors of the PIM. And I would like to thank all my academic colleagues and the administ administrative colleagues at the PIM. So you all have given me a great support during last three years to perform uh, myself as the vice chancellor. I'm the 26th vice chancellor and the first science vice chancellor uh, from the University of Sri Jaya, alumni vice chancellor from the University of Sri Jaya Vardhanapura. I hope I have done my uh, job uh, in a better manner, but I have practiced something during the entire, not only the three years, during last 14 years. I'm the first person to continue as 11 years as the dean in any of the Sri Lankan university system or the universities. I was the three times the Dean of the Faculty of Applied Sciences and the second Dean of the Faculty of Technology continuously. So this is my 14th year serving in my own council at the University of Sri Jayavadanapura. The problem with the scientists is they don't have a heart. So we are very rude. Even at the schools, when we are doing science, we think definitely we are going to be the doctors or maybe the engineers, maybe the scientists. So therefore, we are much prouder than the commerce stream students and the art stream students. All schools, that is happening. I know that. So then we normally working with the formulas. That is science and the statistics. The problem is with the formulas and statistics, they don't have a heart. What I have done was I mix the formulas plus some factor coming from my heart to run the university. So that's why people are really enjoy their life during last three years at the University of Sri Jayavadrapura as well as at the PIM. If you have any issue, always the Vice Chancellor is with you. So that is something new. I think uh, I have practiced in, in Sri Lankan university system. And normally academics are very selfish. 
the main reason is very unfortunately we have a uh, circular called the uh, promotion to the post of professor or to the associate professor that's a marking scheme the young people are now collecting marks rather than doing work to the universities i'm always telling to ugc please do certain necessary changes to this promotional promotion scheme to get the correct people as professors sri lanka is the only country having a senior professors sometimes i most of the time i say don't call me as a senior professor i am not very happy about that particular term so normally other countries they have only the professors that is also a management issue we really want to increase our salaries we look for a opportunity how we can do these things because there is a formula again that is 1 to 6 if the lowest grade person is getting a one a time salary the highest person has to get the six time salary that is a 1 1 1 to 6 so 1 to 1 to 6.2 something like a formula is there that again there is no hard so then the opportunity was to professor we we kept the professor as the highest grade and we have formulate another position called the senior professor i don't know how correct that is but fortunately unfortunately or fortunately now most of the people call assess senior officers so those are the management uh, way outs of uh, sri lankan style not the other countries are fortunately none of the other countries are basically uh, not having senior officers so anyway so we have enjoyed and and i think uh, that is uh, if you take my life these are most memorable years in my life at the faculty of applied sciences And, and and at the university of sri jayawardena and at also the faculty of technology we have done lots lot of changes another one key factor i have added to the university is i never recruited lecturer probationers i never recruited like lecturer probationers i recruited 156 people to university of sri jayawardena pura during last 14 years most of i think except two or maybe three persons i have recruited only the people with phd's what is the outcome during last 4 5 years now we have ranked number number 2 university in sri lanka according to the webometric rankings earlier we were at the place of 6 or 7 because when you have a quality people if you have a quality human resources so if you are interested about the world ranking about the world ranking it's a business that's a different story i am not very much favored about this world ranking business because i believe as a developing country our main uh, thing has to be a quality teaching universities to teach our children but unfortunately now people really want to see the high rank universities available in sri lanka so they have everybody is going in that particular rat race so therefore we took the opportunity and now we made the second best university in sri lanka yeah and the largest uh, university in sri lanka with respect to student numbers so if you think about during last 3 4 years we don't have any student issues most of the time most of the other universities are on the news but not the university of sri jayawardena pura so as a vice chancellor i'm very happy about that thing because i treat my all my students as a uh, children of this country i never thought they are doing something bad i know that they are doing something bad things during the examination period even at the hostels but somehow i manage all these things without much difficulties again i would like to thank uh, professor kalum you are also one of my appointments as a vice chancellor i have taken a tough decision when i really want to appoint a person to the mpim so final say with the vice chancellor i have strongly recommend your name to the ugc to appoint you as a uh, director pim i know your capacity you and me worked uh, during last 20 years together in many uh, projects world bank projects and adb projects and all these things and i and i hope that my choice is uh, very correct and you have done lot of uh, changes to pim um, and um, thank you very much uh, professor ajanta you also helped me a lot uh, and um, the relationship in between the university of sri jayawardena pura and the pim though it's really little weak i really want to see a much more cooperation in between those two institutions and i hope uh, whoever the uh, vice chancellor the 27th vice chancellor from the university of sri jayawardena pura the the relationship in between the the, the pim and uh, the university going to be uh, very strong than uh, now thank you very much
Thank you very much, Senior Professor Sudanta Lienage, for those inspiring words and indeed congratulations on a very illustrious career. Now it is time to launch the e proceedings of the conference and to carry this task out, I wish to invite Director of PIM, Dr. Sayana Kalum Gamage, and our chief guest, Senior Professor Sudanta Lienage, to launch the conference proceeding. And this will be ably assisted by our IT team. We will now display it on the main screen as well. So the conference, e-conference proceedings have been launched, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Next, the speech by the guest of honor, the Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies from the University of Sri Jayavadanapura, Senior Professor M. M. Padmalal. Senior Professor M. M. Padmalal has obtained his PhD specializing in microbial ecology and ecotoxicology, ecotoxicology from the integrated uh, and, and on integrated College of Agriculture, College of Agriculture, Department of Life, Environmental Conservation Science at the Ewing University of Japan. He has also been awarded multiple fellowships and scholarships, uh, to mention a few. Uh, the Global Center for Environmental Studies uh, of the Ehim University of Japan, the Commonwealth Fellowship from the Robert Gordon University of the UK. He has also been awarded the award for the Green Jobs World Environmental Day uh, by the Ministry of Environmental and Natural Resources, the Presidential Award for the 2007 International Publications in Science Index Journals, also the Research Excellence Gold Medal by uh, the Integrated College of Agriculture from the Ehim University of Japan, as well as the Postdoctoral uh, Fellowship by the Commonwealth. And his research interests include microbial ecology, remediation, and ecotoxicology, biomonitoring, xenobiotics, and natural toxins. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the guest of honor for his address, Senior Professor M. M. Padmalad. Good morning to all of you. Vice Chancellor, Senior Professor Sudhantali um, Director PIM, Dr. Kalum Gamage, and uh, Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri, Chair, Co-Chair Research Symposium, PIM, and uh, Dr. Jayavardhana, Co-Chair Research Committee of the uh, PIM. And uh, today, uh, the keynote speaker, Professor Amrik, and distinguished invitees, lecturers, paper presenters, ladies and gentlemen. The first, uh, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me as guest of honor for this uh, inaugural session of the US Symposium. And it is a great pleasure to express some of my views with you uh, at this inauguration ceremony. Professor Ajanta and uh, Professor uh, Sudhanta Lienage clearly mentioned uh, the duties of researchers and uh, so what we have to do for the national development with some statistics. So then uh, when I see uh, the theme of your conference, I believe that the theme of this symposium reflecting reality through research is highly contemporary and important for the country. So then I think this reflecting reality through research, so we have to address. So as we know, the research help us to come up with uh, something new using systematic approach. So that is one of the most important. The systematic approach is very important uh, to find solution to national as well as some complex problems. And also 
So the research also help us to understand the reality, what is happening and what was happened past. So that is also very important through the research. And there are two main paradigms is in research, which are broadly classified as positivism and interpretivism. So these both approaches, we attempt to understand, or we attempt to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, to discover the reality through the research. So therefore, uh, actually, then, uh, so I am pretty uh, familiar with the uh, positivism approach. It is based on the assumption that one objective uh, really can be analyzed or measured precisely and tested. So therefore, um, I know all the participants, uh, the physically and virtually, uh, I mean, attending to the conference, you know well about the scientific process. So I uh, strongly believe we can't understand and we can't provide sound solution to complex uh, problems without a proper scientific approach. So Professor Ajanta and Professor uh, Sudanta clearly mentioned, so our approach is very important. So then we have to follow the protocol and then uh, come up with very good results. And then we have to discuss these results with peers and then only we, have, we can suggest a solution. So therefore, I think uh, this is uh, true in coming up with solutions for issues that uh, Sri Lanka currently faces. Therefore, I strongly believe that the national development of Sri Lanka should be based on the, I mean, the systematic approach. So I think we have systematic approach, but we don't practice properly and monitoring and evaluation are not there. So that's why, so now we have a lot of challenges, a lot of problems, and we have to, I mean, think about to get better solution through research. I could see in this August forum, there are policy makers. So then virtually and physically, then you join with us. And some are regulators and the decision makers. And I proposed, do you follow the systematic approach and contribute to the maximum uh, to find better solution uh, to burning issues that are currently facing? So that is uh, so what, uh, what we have to do through the research. I am uh, happy to observe that the PIM has recently taken uh, several initiatives, progressive initiatives to strengthen the research uh, capacity uh, within the uh, PIM. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Dharmasiri and uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Kalum. Thank you very much uh, for these initiatives. Uh, as the parent uh, university, the University of Sri Jawardhanapura, always happy to help uh, the PIM. Professor uh, Sudanta clearly mentioned. So then his vision is uh, to develop uh, and to co collaborate with uh, our uh, uh, institutes to betterment of the university as well as the country. And um, uh, the research uh, finding, so then uh, today, I think uh, this is a very, I mean, uh, important uh, symposium. So because, uh, so this symposium uh, in, uh, I mean, the policymakers, regulators, and uh, decision makers, so they present their finding. And therefore, I believe all these findings should be communicated to the regulators, policymakers, as well as entrepreneurs, economists, and also the businesses nationally and internationally. So that, so we can find, we can find viable solutions to the burning problem and research uh, through, I mean, research, to reach national development. So that is, uh, we uh, should have a target. So because, so we do research and sometimes we produce uh, postgraduate, uh, I mean, uh, uh, PhDs and MPhils, and then we keep the thesis 
in the library. But the implementation of this research through the research finding is very scarce. So therefore, uh, this is the time uh, to disruptive innovation uh, to the development of the country. So therefore, I believe this research symposium will help to policymakers and regulators and uh, uh, the decision makers to streamline, uh, I mean, uh, the finding for the betterment of the country. And uh, as a scientist uh, and uh, co-chair of the Research Council of the University, I proposed to invest and implement the applied research project in the Sri Lankan context using a proper methodology. So that is what we need right now. So then we have to address um, and we have to, I mean, propose uh, the, and we have to identify the problem, what we are facing right now. And then we have to propose uh, all these, I mean, the proposals using the proper methodology. That is very important. As you know, uh, Professor uh, Sudanta clearly mentioned uh, the many national projects have failed. So due to the lack of such proper methodological, I mean, approach, evaluation and monitoring. So therefore, now we have time, right time uh, to, I mean, sit together and, uh, I mean, discuss our results and find a very viable solution to the problem what we are facing. Uh, with this uh, suggestion, so I would like to conclude uh, my speech and let me wish you all the very best and very happy and very productive dissemination of research knowledge that uh, will have a significant impact, uh, positive impact to the country. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senior Professor M. M. Padmalal, for your wishes for PMARC and for once again stressing on the vitality of research at a time that the country is looking for new horizons. Next, the highlight of this morning's proceedings, which will be the keynote by Professor Amrik Sohal. Dr. Amrik Sohal is a professor in the Department of Management at the Faculty of Business and Economics at Monash University. He is also the di director of the Australian Supply Chain Management Research Unit. He has received research grants from state and federal governments, the Australian Research Council, and Monash University. In 2001, Professor Sohal received the Vice Chancellor's Award for Postgraduate Supervision, and in 2004, he received an award for research excellence from the International Association of Management of Technology. Professor Sohal has an impressive research experience, both in Australia as well as overseas. He has authored and co-authored over 500 papers published in uh, referred journals, as well as multiple books and a number of chapters contributed to books. His current research interests are in manufacturing, operation strategy, technology, information management, quality management, supply chain management, lean and agile production, systems as well as electronic business. He is the associate editor for the Journal of Technovation and Asia-Pacific editor of the International Journal of Quality and Reliability Management. He's a member of the editorial board of a number of journals in the areas of quality management, technology management, and operations management. As per the mentions of research.com, he has been ranked the third best researcher in Australia and the 37, rank number 37 in the world. It's an absolute pleasure to have the presence of such an accomplished researcher, a professor who will be addressing the PIM Annual Research Conference 2022 as the keynote speaker and joining us live from Australia. He will now be featured on the screen for your viewing. Professor Amrik Sohal, the forum is yours, sir. And once again, good morning. And an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Amrik Sohal. Thank you so much. Uh, can I just check that you can hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by saying hello and good morning to everyone, particularly the distinguished guests. 
uh, that I have listened to very carefully and really enjoyed their presentation. So thank you, Vice Chancellor and, and the Dean and others. And I want to thank uh, the co-chairs of this uh, wonderful event, uh, the doctoral colloquium and the uh, industry forum that you're going to hold later on today. Uh, I think they are wonderful initiatives, uh, things that we have been doing for a number of years here uh, at Monash University. So a, a pleasure to be here. Uh, I, I listened very carefully to some of the statistics that were mentioned in the opening by our, our host and uh, the other speakers you know, the growth in population, uh, uh, you know, increasing daily. We've done wonderful in terms of our manufacturing capability. Uh, I, I think uh, it was mentioned that daily we produce, you know, uh, tens of thousands of cars. Uh, of course, in the case of uh, Sri Lanka, a, a very large and a successful uh, clothing apparel manufacturing industry that produces thousands of garments that are, you know, provided to uh, consumers all around the world. So wonderful improvements made. Uh, and, and as managers, we have done really well. I, I want to start sharing my screen, if I may, uh, please. Uh, and, and I want to focus a little bit on, on, on this uh, area of very popular and a hot topic at the moment, creating a circular economy. I, I hope you can all uh, see my slides. Um, if not, please just say so. So we, you know, we must congratulate ourselves as, as business schools, as, as managers and leaders, particularly in, in manufacturing. And you know, over the last 50 years, we've done wonderfully well in terms of our manufacturing capability, including in Sri Lanka. In the 70s, we adopted with the obviously leadership of uh, managers and leaders. MRP systems, we introduced computer numerical control machines. We adopted just-in-time methods, total quality management. In the 1990s, computer integrated manufacturing, flex, flexible manufacturing systems, of course, business process re-engineering, lean production, and so on. And more recently, 2010s, we started to focus on sustainability and, and sort of green operations and supply chain. And, and digitization. So many industries are moving towards uh, uh, digitization, uh, much support here in Australia from our governments to become more digital. Digital healthcare is a big push here. And of course, all of the technologies available under industry 4.0 and, and more and more, we're talking about creating a circular economy. So wonderful work. We should be proud of uh, what managers have achieved through implementation of these innovations in not only manufacturing, but in many other sectors as well, including in agriculture and food and healthcare and so on. Massive improvements in cost, quality and our delivery performance and being highly flexible, you know, now able to meet, meet you know, easily the demand from our consumers. Uh, and in many cases, you know, mass customized products and, and deliver them quickly uh, to our customers. We should be proud. At the same time, we need to think about what we're doing to our planet. Massive amounts of waste. Again, waste was mentioned by our host, I think, and other speakers. Waste of products. No thought about the use of our scarce resources. We use products for a limited period of time and we throw these away, creating a huge amount of waste and landfills and so on. And these are some of the images you see not only in developed countries, but you know every country around the world that I have visited. Recently, only last week I was in Brazil, a big problem uh, in wastage there as well. So we are creating an environment that is becoming more and more difficult to live in. We consume without thinking, we throw away without thinking. And here are some more images I won't do it. So how, sorry to interrupt the wonderful presentation, sir, but I think your screen is on presenter view. I think if you can take the presenter view off and just play the okay. show. Um, let me see if I can uh, do that, present. Uh, sorry, can I just leave it as it is here? Is that, 
Um, if you can just uh, press the presentation, uh, the book, uh, the book icon, the, the slideshow icon. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, I've done that. Is that okay? Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. So, so we, we are creating an environment that is becoming extremely difficult to live in. Uh, and, and, you know, these, these, uh, these pictures represent uh, the environment that we are leaving for our next generation and our grandchildren. This cannot be sustained. And I think, you know, finding sustainable solutions, I think Professor um, uh, Ajanta mentioned the need for developing sustainable solutions that are going to not only uh, meet the needs of our consumers, but the needs of the planet as well. So what do we need? Well, the way we are proceeding in terms of our consumption patterns and our production patterns, we are leaving a world that is only at this point in time, 8.6% circular. You know, 90% plus of what we do and consume is not, you know, complying to circularity principles. And I'll talk a little bit more about circularity and that's my current area of research a number of projects that we have underway and I hope uh, some of these projects we could uh, we could develop and uh, collaborate uh, with some of the researchers at PIM uh, and at other universities. I understand the need to disseminate results hence this uh, wonderful event that you're organizing today but there is a need to develop the projects you know right from the beginning that are co-designed involving the users of the results. Yes, it's great to disseminate, but we need to really involve the users of the research and industry people right at the conceptual stage so that we, in fact, carry out the right projects at the right time, and then obviously disseminate the findings and so on as well. So we, we have a great opportunity. Uh, there, 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 there are obviously challenges and there is a crisis at hand of course, that relates to many of the challenges we face. You know, uh, climate change is one, uh, health issues is another one, of course, the increasing population and so on. And we need to change behaviors. We need to change our thinking in terms of our consumption and production and so on. So if we continue the way we have in the past, back in 1970, our earth could accommodate, if you like, you know, what our demands were. But at the present time today, we need something like 1.75 Earths. And I'm told uh, that by 2050, if we continue along the same path, we will need three Earths to sustain our current way of living and consumption and the way we throw away things and, and, and so on. So we really need to start thinking about a different way of doing things. And that's where, you know, managers and leaders uh, need to come into the picture, providing new approaches, new methods, and, and uh, doing things in a different way. So circular economy has come into the picture over the last two, three years. Our Australian government is uh, uh, investing a lot of uh, money into creating a circular economy. Uh, it has provided a huge amount of funding to create the Australian Circular Economy Hub. I live in Melbourne and, uh, and our state government, uh, Victoria, has also uh, established uh, the Circular Economy Business Innovation Centre, which provides funding for research as well as funding to businesses to, uh, you know, adopt uh, circularity thinking and, drop, uh, and develop, adopt uh, circular strategies and practices and so on. So we have, we have been uh, 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 involved in some research in, in this area over the last two years. What is circularity? I'm, I'm sure most of the, the audience here, uh, your graduate students and your uh, staff members have uh, come across uh, and, and, and know a little bit about circularity. Let me very quickly talk about for two, three minutes, what is circular economy? We're talking about moving away from the linear economy where we take things from the planet, the materials, uh, we make things, we use them for a while, and then we send them to landfill. We have been doing lots of uh, recycling over the last 10, 20 years, but eventually products and materials end up in landfill. 
The circular economy thinking is that nothing goes to landfill. Okay? We capture the materials and uh, all the byproducts and so on, and, and we create an economy uh, that is a closed loop economy with zero waste. And we, we have an economy that you know, restores itself particularly our natural systems and so on. Uh, so moving away, you know, as I said before, from a linear economy, take, make, dispose to landfill, to now capturing our technical and biological materials and reusing those materials again and again without a very, very small amount going to landfill. So um, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation uh, established uh, a, a many years ago. Uh, some of you may have seen uh, this diagram before, which talks about uh, you know, moving away from a linear economy to a circular economy that includes you know, reuse, redistribute, refurbish, remanufacture, and so on. And, and this is what we've been looking at uh, in, in Melbourne, in Victoria. How do we get businesses thinking about circularity how do we get them to develop the right strategy and adopt the right practices? Because for many businesses, particularly the small and medium-sized businesses who struggle day after day, many have closed down because of many challenges, particularly last three years of the pandemic. How do we, how do we get these businesses to start thinking about circularity and do what is necessary? Um, so, uh, just to summarize, uh, circular economy uh, requires a change in mindset and behaviors. One of the companies and senior executives that we have uh, been talking to as part of our research, Mr. Andrew Egan, he says, we don't think of products anymore. We, we just think of materials, how materials are used for a particular product. And the, at, at the end of useful life, how those materials can be used for something else. So a transition from a circular, uh, sorry, from a linear sort of you know, business model to a circular business model is necessary. We need to think about efficiency and resource usage. And you know, what is most important in, in creating a circular economy is you know, collaboration amongst the various stakeholders and closing the resource loops and so on. And I'll talk a little bit more about, about what we've been doing. Um, there's a lot of theory behind it. I won't go uh, into sort of some of the theoretical lens that have been applied and, uh, you know, theories that, that relate to circular economy. They, you know, some of the, uh, some of the concepts and theories are uh, mentioned on, uh, on this slide. Of course, we need to apply some theoretical lens to whatever research we have, that we do. And I'm very keen on, you know, combining, you know, the th relevant theories and taking a much more core design approach uh, in developing new products and applying design thinking and so on uh, into the research that we undertake. Um, so what a circular economy system uh, involves is these things that I have on the screen at the moment. Uh, thinking about the resources that we have, some of them are very, very scarce resources. We are certainly going to run out of some of these resources over the next few decades. Uh, the next top right hand uh, circle there is, is, the, is the, the way we design and produce our products so that in our design stage, we think about different options at the end of life for the products that we produce. And of course, use production processes that produce little waste so that there is no need to sort out the waste and, and handle the materials and recycle and so on. So we, we design and produce in such a way with little waste and lots of options at the end of life. Of course, a key driver for creating a circular economy is thinking about the procurement function, how procurement professionals uh, make decisions so that they relate to you know, circularity, where materials are, you know, recycled materials are used more and more and, 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 you know, we keep our virgin materials uh, as much as possible for our future use. Of course, there is there's still going to be a need for, you know, sorting out our waste and recycling and so on. That has been do going on for many decades now, but, we, but 
circular economy is much more than recycling. We, we've, got to, we've got to minimize the amount of waste we produce and what we recycle. And we do things in a way so that uh, there are, you know, products are in use for much longer than, than the case in the past. So what we've been thinking about is this, this value hill. We, we, we think about, you know, taking resources, uh, extraction of materials uh, from our mining operations and so on. We add value going up the hill on the left-hand side of this diagram. We add value through our manufacturing processes. In the case of Sri Lanka, of course, you know, you use uh, the textile materials and so on and produce very high quality garments. I have been to a number of factories in uh, Sri Lanka. When we were there, uh, we ran a, uh, a international conference on the apparel industry jointly with PIM, which was a very, very successful uh, event. Uh, we add value, we, we make components, we assemble components uh, into final products and through retailing, you know, we sell those components to end users. And, and, and products are kept in use for a period of time. We enhance their usage through, through um, uh, repair and uh, maintenance and so on. And after a period of time, you know, the product starts to lose value. And if we do nothing, you know, the product and whatever is left of the product goes to landfill. We need to move away from this sort of thinking to what we have here on this slide. We develop strategies, apply some new thinking that involves reuse, refurbishing, remanufacturing, recycling, and so on, so that we maintain value and take products back to the other side of the hill and, and, and go back to the manufacturing stage or to the assembly stage and back to retail and back to the hands of the consumer. So this is sort of the current thinking about circular economy. Uh, we are very excited about the work that we have started uh, in Australia. Uh, we are looking at uh, these different uh, 10 Rs. We've typically talked about reduce, recycle, and so on, but we're now beginning to think about 10 Rs. Uh, the very first R is R0, uh, which is refuse, where managers and leaders and owners of businesses saying, no, we are not going to do things this way. We are not going to accept these type of materials because they are harmful. And managers saying, no, we, got, we are not going to do business in this way because it does not aligned with our set of you know, values and principles. So the very first R, R0, is really refusing to do certain things that do not you know, align with your vision and your passion and your strategies and so on. I won't go through all of these uh, uh, 10 Rs. Uh, we've done a lot of work. We've published some papers. There's an industry report on the project that we have completed. And this was the project. This is the front page of a report that we produced for the Victorian government. We've also created a website as well from the work that we've done. So if you'd like to you know, search for the cejourney.org.au, you'll see some of the work that we have done around circular economy. We've been working with 25 businesses. We've written some case studies and some of those case studies are accessible from this website as well. And what we've been doing is really uh, co-designing the approach that we need to take to create a circular economy. In other words, co-designing the relevant business strategies and, and the likely practices that should be adopted and how they should be adopted to achieve the best outcomes. So uh, uh, we, it, it was a fairly large uh, research grant from the Victorian government uh, called Spark in the Circular Economy in Melbourne's manufacturing industry. Uh, three objectives to establish the extent of uh, relevant circular economy practices. We focused on four different industry sectors, textile, plastics, food and agriculture, and general engineering and manufacturing. And we wanted to co-develop, co-design practical approaches to, to, that companies could, could utilize. And we wanted to understand what the barriers and challenges are. Again, in the interest of time, I will not go through all of the results, I'll be very happy to, you know, uh, send uh, uh, the reports and papers and other materials uh, 
to the conference organizers who can share all of this with the with the with the delegates. But very quickly, as I said, uh, uh, the, the, those objectives relate to these three phases. Uh, phase one, we conducted uh, many interviews uh, with managers and leaders of uh, local businesses, 25 leading circular businesses. Uh, in phase uh, two, we took an approach where we co-designed through workshops what should be done in terms of you know, a, a relevant strategy that should be adopted by a particular business and the type of practices addressing R1, R0, and, and, and other Rs. Uh, so it's been a fascinating uh, one year of work, collaborating with industry, uh, you know, capturing knowledge from industry. I think, uh, again, uh, in, uh, in the opening speeches, the need for, you know, knowledge capture and knowledge sharing and sort of core designing and capturing the reality, you know, th that's the theme of uh, your event, you know, understanding and, and reflecting reality through your research and the best way to do that is to actually, you know, co-design the product uh, projects and, and work with managers right from the beginning uh, and eventually, you know, uh, disseminating those results and, and, and adopting the solutions becomes much, much easier um, rather than, uh, you know, sitting in a silo, doing one's research and then trying to make, you know, trying to struggling, you know, struggling with managers you know, saying, here's a solution, go and, go and uh, adopt it. It becomes very, very difficult. Um, so we, we, we've, as I said, we've, through our interviews and, and discussions with the managers uh, through our workshops and so on, we, we understand what the barriers are. We understand what the critical success factors are and so on. And there's a lot of learning that we can share with, you know, other businesses and managers um, who, who need to, start their journey. So our websites that I, uh, uh, you, you have the website address there, the, the cejourney.org.au. Um, we, we're sharing our case study findings. We're sharing our learning. Here are some of the key learnings from our research. Uh, obviously having a vision, the vision of the, the, the senior leaders, uh, the, the senior managers having a vision developing a passion to create a circular economy. Uh, in other words, no waste, designing products, designing processes that are going to produce products that are long lasting and thinking about the scarce materials that could be reused. So modular designs, uh, end of life, different options for the products and materials and really each, each business process need to be think, you know, carefully, including repurposing, recycling of the product at the end of the life. Extending the circularity ideas to the whole supply chain. It's not a single organization as part of a supply chain that should do this. That will not help. We need to think about the whole supply chain and taking your suppliers and your customers on this circularity journey. That we feel is very, very important. And lots of businesses are starting to do that. that you, you know, you, you think about circularity and the circular economy as a, as a whole end-to-end -end supply chain and, and create value uh, and, and, you know, viability for, for all of the businesses involved in that supply chain and creating lots of transparency so that others can see what you're doing and, and they can benefit from your experience and your knowledge. So the idea of knowledge sharing, again, mentioned by, I think, Professor uh, uh, Dharmasiri, uh, knowledge sharing uh, is absolutely uh, important. And we have now created networks uh, in the south part of Melbourne, where these networks are now beginning to meet and share knowledge and, 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 and experiences and communica communicating, you know, what you've learned and, and, and how, how to best make things work and, and make progress and so on. Um, so it requires a network approach. It requires lots of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, creating a future vision and sharing that vision. Of course, lots of communication. Uh, as I said, there's, there's a lot more I can talk about based on the research that we have done. Uh, lots of uh, project outcomes have been identified in terms of, you know, the organizational culture, how to collaborate with suppliers and so on, 
changing manufacturing practices and, and many other things. You know, local collaboration is absolutely important if we are to create this circular, circular economy with no waste and so on. So the call for action really, I believe uh, for managers and, and, and for leaders as well as for academics as well, teaching at business school is to start these conversations. The conversations that relates to sustainability, finding sustainable solutions, creating a circular economy. So what your managers, your, your graduates need to do when they go and find a job in a company, or they may already be in a job uh, with a local company, is to start having discussions with senior executives about what a circular economy is and, and how we create you know, a, 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 uh, the right solutions and strategies and so on. Identify supply chain partners who can take that journey with you. Start with the low hanging fruit first. I haven't had time to talk much about the, 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 the short loops and the medium loops and the long loops that cover all of the R0 to R9, the 10 Rs. But you know, one can start very easily with R0, R1, R2, which is you know, refuse, reduce, recycle, and so on. Pick the low hanging fruit because the, the, long, the long loops, uh, the R7, 8, and 9, requires a lot of investment. Of course, buying new processes and so on. Um, you know, absolutely important to take people on that journey with you. Uh, think how potential change can, can be harmonized with existing processes and how existing processes, existing values and experiences could be captured and, and, and benefited from. The circular economy is not a goal, it's a means to an end. Uh, it relates to many sustainable development goals that you see on the screen. Uh, of course, we're talking about sustainable uh, consumption and sustainable production, goal number 12. It relates to you know a number of other uh, sustainable development goals. We can have a good discussion around all of this. Um, and one of the things we are starting to do now, even at our university, you know, including your university and, and PIM, you know, there's a huge amount of purchasing that, that, that you do. You know, you spend many hundreds of thousands of millions of, you know, rupees on buying things. So in fact, we've just started a project at Monash University where we are talking to the chief procurement officer at Monash University and his team, very large team, who does a lot of the buying of, you know, engineering equipment and materials and even your, 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 your pens and paper and so on. You know, each year, thousands of dollars are spent on buying materials and products at the university. And, you know, they, their thinking is not, you know, circularity thinking. So we, we're beginning to change thinking and behavior of procurement professionals at Monash University and, and of course, hundreds and thousands of procurement professionals employed in our manufacturing and other types of companies, including in hospitals. So circular procurement is a key lever for creating a circular economy. These are the people who make daily decisions about what materials to buy, what products to buy, and so on. And we need to change their thinking so that they, they, they make these decisions with, with circularity in mind and so on. Circular economy is the only option to change the, you know, what we have currently, the, my first few photographs that I shared with you, you know, uh, lots of landfills busting at the seams, our living environment, you know, our, our oceans are polluted with the plastics. Uh, uh, you know, we, we, we do not think twice about throwing away things, especially in many developing countries. We, I've just, I've just been around the world to the USA and a few other countries. You know, we really need to change our behaviors and our thinking about circularity and our scarce resources and, and developing a more sustainable planet. So very quick run through um, what we have been doing. We'll be very happy to extend some of the research that we've been doing in Australia. We have uh, created a research group that we are calling uh, Circular Economy and Sustainability Research Group at Monash University. Uh, we have a number of projects that are underway. 
Uh, Monash University has a, a sort of a center in Italy, uh, a, a place called Prato, which is about 15 minutes on the train from Florence, uh, what we call the Monash Prato Center. On the 26th and 27th of June next year, we are holding a two-day international workshop on circular economy and sustainability. I will send the invite to uh, to uh, the organizers and perhaps they can share that with everyone. Uh, if anybody's interested in you know, taking part in that international workshop in, 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 uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, Prato in, in Italy, please uh, let me know. The other thing I would like to announce uh, to staff members and others and, and participants that in November, hopefully next year, we will be, we will become you know we'll be coming to to Colombo to hold either a conference or two sh smaller workshops, uh, which might be around circular economy, uh, the apparel industry, building on the very successful event that we had a few years ago. Um, we have funding already that's been provided to one of the hotels in Colombo to hold a workshop or or, or two sh smaller workshops, uh, and we look forward to working with PIM and. Uh, Look forward to visiting uh, next November. Uh, thank you very much. That's a very quick run through uh, the work that we have been doing on uh, circularity and, and uh, sustainability. Very happy to take, take any questions if anyone has any questions. Uh, but I certainly will send uh, by email the report that I mentioned, a few papers that we've already published on circular economy and uh, hopefully look forward to developing a collaborative project between PIM and Monash University. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Professor Amrik Suhar, for that very eye-opening keynote speech. Indeed, the thought that we will need three Earths by 2050 to manage the current landfill, that's definitely something of a shocker. Thank you so much for your very eye-opening keynote address. Next. Prior to the vote of thanks, we would uh, like to present uh, a token of appreciation to a very uh, few special individuals who have joined us today. And may I invite the director of PIM, Dr. Sena Galungamage, to hand over these tokens. Firstly, to our chief guest, Vice Chancellor of the University of Sri Jayavardhanapura, Senior Professor Sudanta Lienage. The plaque will now be handed over to uh, the director. Next, we would like to invite the guest of honor, the Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, Senior Professor M. M. Padmanal, to receive the plaque from the Director of PIM, Dr. Senaka Kalum Gamage. Next, uh, we have uh, one uh, more token of recognition, and that is to none other than our keynote uh, speaker, Professor Amrik Sohal. Professor Sohal, I believe you are there with us online. We Thank do. You. Have, uh, Thank you very much. We do have a very special uh, plaque, which is now uh, in the hands of our director. You would be happy to notice that it's small in size, so it's easy to make it circular and reduce the impact on uh, the landfill, but. It comes together with uh, a great heart and a lot of um, gratitude for the wonderful keynote address you have given us. And I'm quite sure that when you are here physically next year, we will be able to hand it over to you in person. And that's Thank something you. which is we are definitely looking forward to for the year 2023. Thank you once again, uh, Professor Amrit Sohal. And thank, thank you, Dr. Kalum. The attitude of gratitude indeed is a very important element in the Sri Lankan culture. And hence, as customary, we now have the vote of thanks, which will be delivered by the co-chair of the PMAC 2022, Professor Nilakshi Galahitiava, who is joining us online. Good to see you, Professor Nilakshi. It is now my honor to introduce her to you. 
Professor Yakshi Galhitiava is the prof is a professor in the Department of Dish and Science at the Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce of the University of Sri Jayawardenepura. Currently, she is on a sabbatical leave and working as an assistant professor in operations management and logistics, the director and dissertation coordinator of the MSc in operations management attached to the Edinburgh Business School of the Harriet Watt University, Dubai campus. Professor Nirakshi Galahitiya has definitely been a driving force behind making PIMAP 2022 a success. Once again, an, an, an absolute pleasure to have her with us uh, virtually present with the assistance of technology. Professor Nirakshi, the forum is yours for the welcome address. Ladies and gentlemen, conference co-chair for the PIMAP 2022, Professor Nirakshi Galahitiya. Thank you, Tarendu. Hope uh, everyone can hear me. Hello. Professor Can you hear me? Loud and yeah. clear. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Chief Guest, Senior Professor Sudanta Lenege, Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Sri Jayadanapura, Guest of Honor, Senior Professor M. M. Padmalal, Director PIM, Dr. Senaka Kalam Gamage, Distinguished Keynote Speaker, Professor Amrit S. Sohal from Monash University, Australia, all invited guests. Distinguished academic staff, administrative staff, and other PIM colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege to have been given the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on the inauguration ceremony of PIM Annual Research Conference, PIMARC 2022. I, on behalf of the organizing committee, would like to extend our richly deserved gratitude to the chief guest of this event, Senior Professor Sudanta Lienege, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Sri Jayawardenepura. We are honored and obliged that you graciously accepted our invitation to be the chief guest, despite being extremely busy. Thank you for the inspirational speech, which acknowledged about the role of research in uplifting the socioeconomic development interventions. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being us with today. Next, the organizing committee of PIMAC 2022 would like to extend our gratitude to Professor M. M. Padmalal, the Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, University of Sri Jayawardenepura, for presence here as the guest of honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your valuable speech. Further, on behalf of the organizing committee of PIMAC 2022, may I offer our sincere gratitude to the director of PIM, Dr. Senaka Kalum Gamagi, for his continuous encouragement effective engagement and leadership provided throughout of this process. You have proven that leader's job is not to do the work, but it is help to figure out how to make others to do themselves, getting things done and succeed beyond what they thought possible. Next, on behalf of the Postgraduate Institute of Management, University of Sri Jayawardenepura, and on my own behalf, extend a very sincere word of thanks to the keynote speaker, Professor Amrik Sohal from Monash University, Australia. We are very honored and pleased that you humbly accepted our invitation to be the keynote speaker and also for the inspiring and memorable keynote address delivered. Your speech is much appreciated, sir. Next, may I take this opportunity to thank all the international and local keynote, uh, keynote speakers, panelists who will be participating for the doctoral colloquium research sessions and industry dialogue today for their priceless service. Our thank goes to the keynote speaker in the doctoral colloquium, Professor Sw Edward Sweeney, Head of Operations Management and Logistics, Edinburgh Business School, Harriet Water University, United Kingdom. The organizing committee conveys a very big thank to the MasterCard Sri Lanka for their strategic cooperate partnership and Perfect Business Solution Services Private Limited, PBS Sri Lanka, for platinum sponsorship. It is happy to announce that the total cost of the conference is being covered by these valuable corporate collaborations. All the sessions will be broadcasted live on a YouTube stream and the participants have been invited to join virtually. Thank you very much for joining with us today. We hope that you will actively participate to share your insights in the different events and enjoy an immensely re rewarding experience. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would also like to convey a very big thank to our administrative staff, including Mr. Jayanthi Ranapura, Assistant Registrar, and Mr. Pulsanaviratna, Deputy Bursa, 
and the PIM team for the immense support provided. Well, an event like this cannot happen overnight. We are blessed with a team of motivated, results-oriented and dedicated colleagues. I cannot thank everyone enough for their involvement, dedication and attention to the detail on the completion of tasks beyond their comfort zones. Thank you very much, PIMAC 2022 team. We have proven unity strength when there is a teamwork and collaborations, wonderful things can be achieved. Finally, I would like to congratulate all researchers, those who are presenting today in doctoral colloquium, research sessions, and industry dialogue. I hope this event will help all the presenters to uplift their knowledge in order to bring societal impact for research. This is what uh, the ultimate uh, target of PIMAC uh, conference from 2019. Last not but least, we also would like to express, express a very big thank to Mr. Tarandu Amarasekara, senior lecturer at PIM, for lively and enthusiastic comparing of the entire PIM 22 conference. Thank you all and have a fruitful day ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Nilakshi Kalahidiyava, for that wonderful vote of thanks. And indeed, it's an absolute honor and pleasure to be associated with PIM Annual Research Conference. And indeed, this is not an end, but rather a beginning of a day filled with insight sharing forums. As I mentioned earlier, a festival of insights and a kaleidoscope of knowledge. May I also remind all the participants who are physically present here today that refreshments will be served downstairs at the cafeteria. And while you're on the way there, we will uh, assemble at the entrance to the PIM the, under the portico where we will be able to take a group photograph, which I'm sure will be a memory to cherish uh, in the years to come of this momentous occasion. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we conclude the inauguration ceremony of the PIM Annual Research Conference. Thank you for being here. And the doctoral colloquium will start sharp in 30 minutes from now, which we would... Uh, Time it as 11.20 a.m. So sharp at 11.20 a.m., the doctoral colloquium will commence. Do join us online. And once again, a reminder, all those who are physically present here today, we will assemble at the entrance for a photograph followed by refreshments. Thank you very much. And as Dr. Nilakshi said, may you have a fruitful day as we all are ready to reflect on reality through research. Thank you very much.